The Florida Keys have always attracted adventurers, restless spirits who escape the mainstream to try a life in paradise. Legendary characters like Ernest Hemingway and Tennessee Williams are among the many to find their paradise in these islands. Over 60 years ago, a restless tool and die maker from Detroit traveled to Big Pine Key to experiment with underwater photography. What Adolf Grimmel found instead in the southernmost tip of the United States was a home, a place he would live for the rest of his life, all because of his discovery and love of tropical fruit. Grimmel was a mythical character who was known as much for his eccentricities as the incredible tropical fruits he collected from all over the world. He looked really old, like sun-baked, always had an open shirt and uh, short khaki shorts on, just wandering around, looked mad all the time. I, I think he wanted to interact with people and just didn't know how. He just didn't know how. Kind of like a storybook character, and he was very, I remember him being very serious, but very passionate. There, there seems to be a, an amount of genius in what he did there. Grimmel created his paradise. Botanists and visitors marveled at his creation. The Grimmel Grove became a masterpiece of ingenuity. Everybody had an interest in the Grimmel estate because of what he did. It was widely considered back then that you couldn't grow this stuff in the United States first and it was widely considered that you couldn't grow it in the Keys. It's too salty, it's, uh, it, it's too windy, it has a lot of other problems, so he had to mitigate all of those things, and that's what made Adolf Grimmel such an innovator. All of his things, which now are very timely, his raised beds, his irrigation, his microjets and all that, he was way ahead of his time with this back in the 60s when he was doing this sort of thing. It had a, a very succulent feeling because the fruits were growing all over the place and, and, uh, and he would want you to taste the fruit. Uh, my first recollection of walking into his grove was that I actually had stepped into Eden. When Grimmel died in the late 90s, his dream died with him. The land he worked so tirelessly was abandoned and soon became a camp for the homeless and drug addicts. Two and a half acres of property covered over with Florida holly, grown up, grown over, weeded. Beds, there was beds and tires and uh, pipes and broken glass and beer bottles. There was a mobile home on it, there were t tires, um, some drug paraphernalia. Adolf's trailer actually became a crack house. I, I mean, an absolute true crack house. It was a real mess. It was very, um, scary walking by here because you didn't know who was in here or what was in here. There was pockets of beauty. You could see a few things and you're like, wow, that's kind of cool. You could see something that's been here. But what I remember most is there was a vibe. There was, there was a spirit and uh, it kind of called me and uh, it, I couldn't really let it go. As so often happens in life, the most beautiful moments occur accidentally. When a Canadian free spirit with a penchant for traveling off the beaten path came across the abandoned paradise, he found his life's purpose. When I first talked to the real estate agent, he said there was some fines, but it wasn't a big deal. And I gotta admit that I was quite naive in this whole process. Um, maybe that was for the best. That time, the code enforcement lien was $850,000. Anybody in business went to someone and said, I'm really giving serious thought to doing this, they would probably commit them. It was a lot of stress, you know, a lot of stress. Uh, you know, um, even when we finally did close on the property, uh, I threw every dime I had into it pretty much, and, uh, you know, what my wife gave birth the same week. It just fell apart and got overgrown and just, and I think that if it had gone on much longer, it wouldn't have been salvageable. I don't think you could have saved it if it, if it hadn't started happening when it started to happen. We have to have somebody who has a mission statement, and uh, Patrick came at the right time. So much has been accomplished with just people's energy and, and, and you know, 
enthusiasm and its sweat equity. Patrick Garvey understood the significance of what once lived on the property. Forsaking his life savings and his sanity, he sacrificed it all to save what many considered to be already lost. Putting so much energy and time and sweat and blood into this, into this uh, project and money into this project, there was a connection. I mean, I spent so much time here by myself and I got to know these trees so well. You know, it just became a close connection uh, to the property and kind of the spirit of the man. What is it about this piece of land that brought two generations of adventurers to pour their life and soul into its soil? This is the story of the Grimmel Grove, and we're asking you to help it get told. It's a story that resonates, a genuine story of passion and ingenuity. It's imperative that we continue to support the heritage of the Keys and this important landmark. Future generations will be able to experience a renaissance in tropical fruit in the Florida Keys. I don't think that, uh, that uh, many people knew about the history, and that's one of the aspects of why it's so important that somebody like Patrick Garvey is here, because he's saving the history of the place, and he's reigniting interest in the place, and it really uh, is very important for community to, uh, to have that. One thing I, I, I do have is the ability to you know, involve others, and you know, my vision for this property, for this project, is really one of, of inclusiveness and, and togetherness. Uh, together we can improve our community. You know, and together we be, can become more uh, sustainable, more self-sufficient. But it really, you know, just like they say, it takes a village to raise a child. You know, it takes a community to save a grove.